Plague number two, the frogs. Exodus 8, 2 says, If you refuse to let them go, this is God speaking, I will plague your whole country with frogs. The Nile will teem with frogs. They will come up into your palace and your bedroom and onto your bed, into the houses of your officials and on your people, into your ovens and kneading troughs. The frogs will go up upon you and your people and all your officials. And so Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the land. But the magicians did the same things by their secret arts. They also made frogs come up on the land of Egypt. So this particular plague addresses the goddess named Heket, and she is the goddess of fertility for the Egyptians, and she is rendered as a frog here. And so frogs were not a new thing for the Egyptians. They were a natural occurrence. During the winter seasons, they would bury themselves in the mud and basically go into hibernation. And then when the time was right in the spring, they would burst forth from the banks and rapidly multiply. And so for the Egyptians, who saw the Nile River as the source of everything, when they saw life springing forth in abundance out of the river, they thought, hey, you know, we need to worship this. Let's give it a name, and let's call her the goddess of fertility. And this is Heket. And so what happens is that God multiplies a naturally occurring event. Right? Because there's already frogs there. He doesn't do a new work. He just multiplies, increases what's already there. And so the frogs now overrun Egypt. And this overrunning mirrors the same thing that happened with the Hebrew people. Right? Exodus 1.9, Pharaoh says, Oh my gosh, the Israelites, they're too numerous from us. We need to do something with them. Let's enslave them. Otherwise, if war breaks out, they'll leave our country. So this is the same thing that happens with the Hebrew people. Is God overruns the Egyptians with fertility. And he basically is telling the Egyptians, Look, I am the one that has power. I am the one who is powerful over you in bringing forth life. Now to Israel he says, I am your life. Don't count on those Egyptian gods that they had to pray to to add fertility to the womb. Don't trust in those gods, Israel. I am your life. I have power over them. Let me be your life. Now this is something also then that is duplicated by the Egyptian magic arts. So the first two plagues I think are interesting. The bloody river and the frogs are duplicated by the Egyptians. Now what does this mean? Well, if you look at our everyday life, we can do the same basic stuff that the Egyptians did. It's like this. The Nile River represents provision. And God's trying to get people to believe and trust in him for his provision. But it's duplicated. Do we do that in our everyday lives? God is desperately trying to get you and me to say, trust in me. Don't count on the things of this world to provide for your needs. I want to be your provider. But time and time again, we choose to go our own way and duplicate what God wants to do for us. And he's desperately saying, no, I have power over you in bringing forth your provision. Don't go and do it yourself. Trust in me. Put your hopes in me. Also, the bringing forth of life. Can we duplicate that today? In our culture, particularly the American culture, we have a very strong, long history of trying to control the bringing forth of life. And we say our individual choice is more important, more powerful than letting God be the one who chooses when life comes forth. And so we do things to manipulate and control that. We duplicate God's miracle. And God is desperately saying to us, don't do that. Let me be the one. So we are basically doing today the same thing that the Egyptians have done with their black arts. That's just a little food for thought.